So the new Power Automate custom visual for Power BI has been released and I've been playing around with it for a couple of hours and I thought I'd show you what I've learned so far. Bear with me on this video. I'm new to this topic of Power Automate. Um, it's not my clearest or cleanest of videos I've ever done, but hopefully you find it useful. There's a couple of little traps and tricks in there that I found. So um, yeah, let me know if you find it useful. Please leave in the comments things I've done wrong or you know you do differently. Um, I'm gonna learn this along the way. So here's my first look, first experience. Let's go. I'll start off by showing you the solution and then I'll walk you through what I did, what traps I came across, what tricks. Um, I am by far from the world's best Power Automate user. There are probably better ways of doing this, but this is how I sort of hacked my way through things. Um, I'm in Teams here, the Power BI report is embedded. If I go to option B and I click on green, it will remember these selections when I send them to Excel. So I'm gonna send them to Excel by clicking on this button. This is the Power Automate button. Let me bring my Excel file across here. Okay, there we go. It's been added, just showed up here in the Excel file. Then there's, I've actually put in a 60 second delay before the refresh happens in Power BI. So if I go to Power BI and I go in here, the last refresh for this one here, this is the one. We're just waiting for that to kick in. And if I refresh my screen, I've also set up a little power um, automate alert to my phone. So I should get a little bing when the refresh completes. Now I put a 60 second delay in there because there's a lag between when the Excel file opens up and when the data fresh happens. Um, so we're just gonna wait for that 60 second ding. And any second now, Hopefully, this should work. So let's take a look and let's just quickly refresh this. There's the ding. Okay, so that means the process is completed. Um, let's update this, have a look at the last refresh date. So here we go. Here's the, well, it's the refresh is still going on. And this is one of the things that I haven't got a trigger for when the refresh completes you've almost got to allow a delay. So here it's going, it's actually running. And ultimately when that finishes, I'd be able to go back in here, refresh my screen here, and this would update, okay? You've only got eight refreshes a day with Power BI Pro, 48 refreshes a day with Premium, okay? This isn't the solution I would build for, for this scenario. Um, something like forms would be much better, um, but just beware, okay? Right, let's, let's see how I built it. So what you do, you start off, and we'll start off with a brand new empty sheet. You need to go to the um, get more visuals option and go and get the um, Power Automate custom visual, and there it is. If you're gonna use this a lot, you can actually pin it after it's loaded. Okay, so that's the first step, go and get it from, from the store. I've got some data in here already. Okay, there's a little questions table that I set up and there's a little table of numbers that I've set up. So, you know, I, I just put this in as a slicer, for example. And I'm not gonna go through this exact setup here, but you get the idea. Okay, now the key thing is when you add the Power Automate visual. It asks you to put in fields. So it gives you some instructions in here. Okay, let me just move this over. Okay, so it's in adding some data. So I want the option to be captured. So the selected option. So I've just dragged that in. And I want the color to be captured as well. So those two things are going to be captured. I do not know why that has, I do not want relationships detected. It didn't do that before. Okay, and also I just want um, the unit measures. So I've got a little measure in there. So I've got a little value of colors and measures, so like that. 
Okay. Okay, so this seems to have sorted itself out, a little bit buggy. Um, now the next thing, you go to the three dots and you say edit. But before I do that, I want to be able to push my data to an Excel file. So what I had done is set up an Excel file in OneDrive already with a column. Let me show you that Excel file again. So I'd already set this up as a table in this file called question result. So those four columns, I manually created that, turned it into a table, all saved here, okay? So that was, that was sort of step one almost. Um, okay, so here we go to the three dots and we click edit. Then you're faced with this and nothing seemed to happen for a while and I was confused. So I started clicking about elsewhere, but eventually it kicked me into this screen. And if you haven't created any flows before, then you will not have anything listed here. You can create one from a template, send a message to Teams, create an item in a SharePoint list. So there's a bunch of little templates built in here, but I went straight in for the instant cloud flow, like create your own from scratch essentially. Um, these are the ones I built. This is the one that's just run and is, is updating um, and refreshing, etc. So that's the one I've already built. So if I go to build this from scratch, I go to that instant cloud flow and now we're into the sort of power automate world but within the power bi screen um okay so new step i want to go to excel online business okay and i want to add a row in a table and then you just got to browse for your um browse for your Excel file. So mine's in OneDrive for Business. It's in within the document library. It's in the OneDrive document library. I then browse and go up here to testing. That's where I put it. Then I put it under this Power Automate button folder. And there it is, question results. Okay, so that's what it's gonna update, the table. And here it says, what table in that file? Well, it's one I named table results. So there we go. We've added that step. Okay. And then it prompts, prompts you with the four columns that are in that table. So what are you going to put in there? And this is where you get this dynamic content, which is based on the fields you drop in to the, over here on the right hand side, option, colors, units measured. Yeah. But you also get user ID, user name, etc. So the answer I want in here, is the option. So I'm going to say Power BI Data Options. Okay. And this user interface is a little bit strange. It sort of collapses and expands. It's a little bit annoying. So the bar chart item, and again, this screen down here is a little bit fiddly. Um, I want to say, okay, the data color. Um, then I'll put in equals and the unit measure. Okay, perfect. Then the date is going to be the timestamp. And I'll come back and talk about that in a second. And then the author is the user's email address or the username. Okay, so there we go. Then I want to also post a message to Teams. So I'm going to add a new step. So Teams uh, down here, post a message to Teams and I'll pick a channel. So I'm going to pick my Starforce channel, which is where I do my demos. Um, and then within there, I will pick the demo group. And you know, you can say updated at, and then you can put in the timestamp again. You could say, you can put whatever fields you want in there to update the message. And then I finally added a new, another new step to notifications. Okay, notifications, send a notification to my mobile, and so on. Also, sorry, before I did that, I added, and you can add it wherever you want. Okay, add it here. I search for Power BI, and I triggered a Power BI dataset refresh. Then you search for your Power BI, so I had the demo workspace, and within the demo workspace, Okay, 
you can't do this step until you've published the file. So this step I did at the end, I added this refresh here, but I also added, I discovered that there was a lag between when this Excel file happened and when this refresh happened. So I came back in um, and I added a delay. Okay, so add this schedule and down here you see delay schedule. Okay, so you can click in this delay, delay for one minute or 60, you can change it to seconds as well if you want to, 60 seconds or something like that. So one minute. So there's my steps. One thing I found, the date. Okay, the date of the refresh comes out in a horrible format. So I went back in here and I added, okay, a, um, there was a time conversion uh, convert time zone. That's the one. So convert time zone because it comes out as UTC time when you're running this in online. So time to convert, uh, grab from here and it's the timestamp. Source time zone is UTC zero. So you just go down here and you find, uh, where is it? Just uni coordinated universal time. Convert it to Perth time. So we're plus eight. Uh, plus eight, where has it gone, Perth? Okay, and the format string, this is key. Okay, so really what I went for is just a general pattern like this, general date time pattern. Um, if I pick some of the other ones, then, then you can't actually format them as dates. So I just went for this general. Then in my Excel file, I didn't use the date here, the timestamp, I used if I go down here, the converted time, okay? Same thing when I went down to post my message, I put it in here, the converted time. Otherwise you get a horrible one. Let me show you what it looks like. So if I say original time, okay, and I put in the timestamp. Okay, that's all good. Click save, okay. Oh, data set is required. Right, sorry. So I didn't actually finish that bit off. So let's close this. I won't bother with that refresh data set. See, I haven't put a data set in here yet. Let's just delete that step for now. And we'll just post the message to Teams. Okay, save and we're all good. And it says, this is the name. You might want to change that to something like uh, demo uh, PA visual. Power Automate Visual. Then, importantly, you must click this Apply button. Right, remember to click that, otherwise this does not work. Then you want also to add some other people to be able to run this flow. So you might want to go edit and actually add in uh, a user group or a list of all the people's names who were able to click this button. Okay, so. That's one thing to be aware of as well, if you want others to, to refresh this. Right, let's go back to the report. And now you have this option to run the flow. And if I select something like option C, and I click on the word black, okay? And then I run that flow, it should in theory update the Excel file. So let's give it a go. One thing I noticed is that obviously you have to hold control when you're in desktop, when you click the button, but the actual triangle for the for the run of the flow doesn't actually do anything. You have to click on the word or somewhere else. So I was just clicking away here and nothing was happening. Um, also, you can change the name uh, within this um, flow control here. You can change the button text to whatever you want and you can on hover and on selected and other things as well. Okay, so if I click this, it says triggering, it's running it. And in theory, these options should now be being pushed through to that Excel file. So this was option B and black. Um, and if I just open up that Excel file again, okay, let me just go and open this. And here we go. Just run just now option B and black. Beautiful.
So, you know, that's the process in there. A um, couple of other things to be aware of. I did, when I was trying this out, I did actually change one of these fields, this colors field, it was called items or something originally, and I changed it. That does not flow through into your uh, Power Automate routine. So if I change the word colors to something else, color, I would have to go in and edit my flow because the colors is part of the one of the items being picked up by my flow. Same thing if you change the report name on the data refresh and all those sorts of things. Okay, so this one here, this is the one I just created. Uh, I didn't save the actual name change that I made. If I go in here to edit. So down here where it says applied to each and in here it is taking, you know, these fields aren't great as well. This isn't the great experience because you have to hover over it. You see the word colors at the end. So I would need to delete that if the word colors had changed and then come down here and pick the new color if that's what I've changed it to. Um, so that caught me out. Uh, and also when you're um, refreshing this, think about credentials. So your, it's your credentials that are pulling the data from the SharePoint site. Um, it's You've added people using the um, using this window back here, run only users, you can edit that and add people in here so that they can actually run the flow as well. And then also, once you've done this, if you go into Power Automate, so if you log in to your Office 365 and go to Power Automate, you'll then find them, your flows in here. If you go to My Flows, and you'll see a list of you know whether it's successful or not. So here's the one I created and I can actually edit it here as well. I did find that adding fields and jumping back and forth, some of the new fields didn't show up here. I had to go into the desktop to do that. But again, I'm learning, so maybe I was doing something wrong, um, but I did find I had to do this in the desktop version for some things. But you can certainly add and amend this up here now and add extra items, especially if they're not related to that Power BI report. So it's pretty nifty. Um, I like the concept. You can see in here when, you, when your flows have run and you can do some checks and things as well. So there you go, so my very first look at this. Um, it's a bit disjointed because I just wanted to show you what I found so far. I think the converting time zone one, oh, let me show you this. If I go back to Teams, um, when I refresh this now, it will, it will show the latest ones. Um, it was just that time delay between when the refresh happens. There we go, there are the items. And um, in Teams, okay, in my messages, so if I click on the actual channel, here we go, updated at, and there's the time. And then this was the original time, that horrible format. So that convert time zone thing, really good. Okay, hope you find it useful. Please like, subscribe if you wanna keep up to date. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you found out better ways or if I've missed something because I'm learning this stuff as well. Hope you find it useful. Catch you later.